Hi. Hi, great cram. Look, this is a creative meeting on the Death Star. And I have sat in many creative meetings like this where weird and wonderful decisions get made, odd things happen, and often it felt like half the people in the room were on a different planet. So I'm really interested in how these decisions get made. So this is a real ad, and someone sat in a room and made a decision collectively that this was a great ad. I call this the turkey. So how do turkeys get picked? How did a client choose this ad over another option that was on the table? Now, my background is in psychology, and so I've always been interested in how humans make decisions, how the brain works. And over the last 15 years of working in marketing and media, I've come up close and personal with some pretty strange decisions. And I've discovered that there are about four ways in which making decisions about ideas it can be difficult. Here they are. And what we're going to do over the next few minutes is just look at these four issues and look at four villains, four characters who represent these four issues. And I want you to see if you recognize any of these people that maybe you work with someone like this. Kim Il John. So for example, he makes gut feel decisions, or he made. And what he did in 2006 was he found there was a guy who was breeding giant rabbits in Germany, and he decided that could solve his food crisis. So he imported 12 of them, but he got greedy and he ate them all on his birthday banquet. So gut feel is really important for me. When I see a good idea, the hairs on the back of my neck raise. And gut feel's great. The problem is we come up with supposedly rational ideas to hide those emotional decisions because we don't embrace our gut feel. Um, the second villain I want to talk about is the devil's advocate. Now this is a role created by the Pope in 1587. For people that were being put forward to be sainted, they would find somewhere to chase after them and see what all the bad things were. Um, and then Pope John Paul II got rid of this role and the number of saints per year went up a thousand percent. So the problem with the devil's advocate is the very notion of advocacy is about I take a position, you take a position, it's a tug of war, we dig our heels in, and that's wrong. A much better way is collective inquiry where we together look for the right answers in a neutral way. Our third villain is Mao, who famously solved the wrong problem with his great leap forward where he converted farms into backyard steel furnaces, ended up with loads of low quality steel, and 30 million farmers starved to death. And in the marketing sphere, solving the wrong problem is like Kodak here, who embraced the digital revolution by creating a camera, camera that had a digital preview screen, but you still had to take the film to the store to print out, <laughs> solving the wrong problem. Our last villain is someone very scary called Carol Beer, famous for saying, computer says no. And she represents the idea that data can only take us so far, whether it's market research, link testing your creative, clickstream data, user data, you can only take so far from data around ideas. Now, a famous marketing disaster is New Coke. So in 1985, they replaced the Coke recipe. And most people don't know, they did a huge amount of research. Overwhelmingly, in their taste tests, consumers preferred New Coke. But there were 10% of people in the focus groups who said, no, don't fuck with my Coke, that's bad. And when they went to market, it was those 10%. They didn't really matter in the research, but those 10% ruined the whole launch of New Coke, and it was recalled. So that's where numbers can only take you so far. Now, we've met four villains, and if you recognize any of these in your life, here's what you can do about it. First of all, you have to control the process. So as leaders of decision-making, you need to be clear on how are we making a decision around creative ideas around here. You control the process, but not the content. First of all, within this, you have to be clear on what the objectives are. You can't have all three of these things. And what we see is that in all the meetings I've ever been in, clients hardly ever refer back to the creative brief and the objectives when they're evaluating creative, which is really odd. They're using a lot of gut feel, and gut feel is important. There's space for the heart and the head. Uh, what we need to do with it, though, is not hide it. We need to recognize it and get people to state their gut feel without having to give a reason. Um, and that's really important. They just state your gut feel. Don't try and rationalize it. Also, there is a role for the devil's advocate. So if you've seen hashtag Suzanne or bum party, you'll appreciate that we need to look for best and worst case scenarios. And everyone should play that devil's advocate role together at the same time. Not leave it to one person to be the devil's advocate. Lastly, um, everyone in your team making decisions, they want their voice to be heard, but they want the leader to make the decision. So we need to actively listen. And the more senior we get, the worse we get at listening, right? And also, it's often not clear who is making the decision. So listen clearly, uh, listen actively, and decide clearly. Back in the Death Star, you'll notice that Yoda is actively listening. You'll notice that Princess Leia is clearly in charge, and C-3PO has just presented some research. 
And now they're involved in act, uh, a collective inquiry. But in your world, if going to present ideas to the client is like going to Jabba the Hutt's cave, you could have a problem. And like Han Solo nearly spent his life um, entombed in carbonite in Jabba's trophy cabinet, you don't want to be trapped in a world of bad decisions. <laughs>